G'day and welcome to Ford Off-Road. In this video, we're working on my Toyota Hilux. I'm going to be replacing the rear brakes. I'm going to replace the shoes, the drums, and the wheel cylinders, bleed the brakes, and adjust them, and show you how to do that properly so that your handbrake will actually work. It's a very common complaint on drum brake cars, especially the Hilux, that the handbrake doesn't work, and it's purely and simply because people have no clue how to adjust them. So stick around, I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing I'm going to do is jack it up, put it on some jack stands, rip the wheel off, and then we can start pulling things apart. So getting the brake drums off is pretty simple. Out of all these holes around next to the studs, two of them have an M8 thread in them. Just put the bolt in there. It'll wind itself off. Make sure your handbrake is off, and if you want you can have the vehicle in park or uh, neutral I mean. But just make sure the handbrake is off. Otherwise it won't come off. Simple as that. Now you can see that these dry, these shoes don't actually don't actually need to be replaced. But on the other side, I'm replacing a wheel bearing because and it's burnt out all the shoes, the wheel cylinder, and everything while it's been wrecked. So you always do brakes in pairs, so I'm doing both. So this video is on the how to replace and adjust drum brakes. There's another video on my profile about how to replace the wheel bearing. So jump over and check that out if you want. Anyway, let's continue. Now before I pull any of the brakes actually apart, what I'm going to do is put a clamp on the line, so no fluid, because we're going to have the back of the wheel cylinder undone. So not no, but very minimal fluid is going to drip out onto the ground. Rightio, wheel bearings done on the other side. So now I'm going to show you how to replace brake shoes on this side. If you want to see the wheel bearing video, click onto my channel and we'll be on there. So that is the part number. I don't know if we can see that. TSS5008. It's going to need a few basic tools to change this stuff. Just some flies, 10 mil spanners, and that's pretty much it. So to start off with, going to get these off, which hold the shoe, which is just that little pin, and you press on the bottom of it like that, and it'll pop out. It's hard to do one-handed. Press on the bot, press on it like that, and there we go, like that. Let's come down to the bottom now. Pull that up. Get that shoe free. Same on the other one. That out. This spring off that how it goes onto the handbrake adjuster. I'll put this down. Spring off that goes to the handbrake adjuster. You can take it off at the top or the bottom, it doesn't really matter. It's a good idea to if you're doing both sides, don't do both sides at the same time. Do one side and then the other side so you can go and look at how that's set up if you get stuck. This spring off the bottom. Just need some side cutters. Careful not to cut the spring, but just pull it out of that. Pull it out like that. And then the handbrake out of the... Just again with some side cutters. Grab it and flip it up. Now we're ready to pull them off. So we do to get them off, pull the bottom out, twist it sideways, take it fast. Gonna change the wheel cylinder. Now to undo the pipe on the back, I highly recommend that you have one of these spanners, which is because again it goes over and it grabs the whole of the nut instead of just a little bit. Loosen that off and get your normal spanner once it's already loose. There is going to be some brake fluid come out because we can't take it all out of the pipe but we have that clamp on there so what does come out is going to be nothing compared to what otherwise would. Right, 10 millimeter on the end of your ratchet. Okay so when you put the new wheel cylinder in what I like to do is get 
What I like to do is get the, um, the thread started first on the pipe before I put the before I put the bolts in. Because once you do the pipe up, um, once you do the bolts up, it's stuck in place and it can be a little bit difficult to get the to get that started. Do the pipe back up. Okay, so with the brake shoes, I'm just going to get a pair of pointy nose pliers and wind the adjuster all the way back in. Okay, flip it over. Because I have to go back in the same spot, so I like to just get the other one next to it. Like I said, if you're doing one at a time, then you can go and check which hole the spring goes in on the other one. But, let's get your side cutters. Pull that string out. Pull the string out. Going in a big hole on that one. And a little hole on that one. This little thing back on if it falls off. Can be a little bit tricky to put on actually. Right, that is ready to put back on the car. Yeah, to put them back on, exact reverse, taking them off. Just put it in there. I like to get the bottom on this place, the bottom on the locator. Press these in with my fingers and then pull the shoes out over the tops. Holders back in, just poke it through the thing in the back. Now if you put this in, put it against it and push down with these pliers on the corner, you can get your finger on the back of that pin and move it around to push it to slide it into the spot where it needs to be. So push on the corner with the pliers and move it around at the back to where it needs to go in. Sometimes it is a bit tricky, especially when I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera. Just like that. Another one. In from the back, push on the corner, squeeze it in, like that, spring on the bottom, same way it got off with some side cutters, be really careful, you've got to pinch it enough to grab the spring, don't pinch it so much that you cut the spring. Handbrake adjuster, just goes over that little pin. And lastly, the handbrake cable. Get the side cutters against against it like that, against a little bit on the end. Some other pliers, and just kind of pull it through like that, and then maneuver it up and around like that. Let it go. Done. We'll now put the drum on. Before we put the drum on, get some brake cleaner. Clean the surface that the pad's going to be on. Sometimes they have like a protective coating so they don't rust while they sit on the shelf. Let's clean that. Right on. Now we're going to slightly adjust the brakes before we bleed them, just so they're out and almost touching the almost touching the drum. But we're going to have to adjust them after bleeding them because that will once we pump the brake pedal, it'll centralise the shoe. So at the moment when we tighten it, it might go like that, but it, once you pump it, it'll centralize it and you can tighten it properly after that. Okay, so inside there, that little ring that I, that little toothed wheel that I was playing with before, undoing, you've got to get a little screwdriver in the back of it. 
You can take the little plug out of that hole and that will actually show you how far away from the drum the shoes are. So you just got to feel around, it's kind of go by um, feel on the back bit. Feel around, find where the teeth are. And just adjust it a little bit, just with a short screwdriver. Just until the shoes are looking through that hole, just until the shoes are at the drum, but so that you can still spin the wheel. So the shoes are at the drum, but you can still spin the wheel. And then we're gonna bleed brakes and readjust so that the hand brake and the rear brakes work the way they're supposed to. Okay. And while you're doing it, you'll have to keep an eye on this because it's gonna go down. It won't go down too far, but it is going to go down and you don't want it to go too low, otherwise you're going to be bleeding the fronts as well. 10mm spanner or whatever size the bleeder is. Now you're going to need a helper sitting in the car to do this. So they're going to press the brake pedal down, hold pressure on it, you undo it, and then when their foot goes to the floor, they let you know, you tighten it, otherwise the air will go back in, and again and again and again, and then once you've got pretty much just fluid coming through, the person sitting in the car will pump it five or six times to get a lot of pressure behind it, open it, wait for them to say it's on the floor, close it again, and do that a couple times till you get nice clean fluid coming out, and then and no air bubbles at all, and that's how you bleed them. So I'm going to go and find myself a helper. Got my helpers. That better not go on your ship. It's gonna. Oh, Good helpers. Okay. <laughs> Another help around here. You're doing with that seat. You just want the camera. Okay, up. <laughs> down. Yep. Holding your foot down. Yes. Up. Yep. Down. Yep. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Down. Down. Okay, so the brakes are bled and they're basic adjusted. Now it's got to put the wheels on to adjust them properly. Um, I've had these wheels sitting here for a little while now. 33s on zero offset rims. I just wanted to see what they'd look like on the car. So, see if that works, see if I can still turn on the front. Because I have a 265 on now and these are a 285. Well, I got them off, I might as well chuck them on and See how it goes. Anyway, put them on and adjust the brakes properly. Just gonna get the same thing as before. So this time we're spinning the wheel and waiting for contact with the... We did them up pretty good before. They're possibly even already in the right spot. A little bit more. You can see the gap. If you look in this hole, you can see the gap. And you want the gap to be very close. And then we're going to check the handbrake in the car, pull it on and make sure it stops the wheels at where we want them to stop. It might seem tight, but it's going to loosen up. So it's not quite in contact yet. I'm going to do the other one and then I'm going to check in the car. Check in the car at what the handbrake's doing. Right, so that's pretty good. Couple of clicks. That wheel stopped. That wheel stopped. So that's how you want it. So that, so that only comes up a couple of clicks because it's adjusted properly and tight against it. That's it. If it comes up, comes up to about there, I'd keep tightening it until it's only that much. Now, readjusting those brakes is part of every single service so it's fine now but in 5000 k's it won't be they're supposed to be automatic adjusting i've never seen an automatic adjuster that actually automatically adjusts you have to adjust them manually every single service and it'll keep it working exactly how it should so i'm just going to take it off the jack stands go for a drive I might put the right size wheels on the front too anyway Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, like and subscribe, check out the rest of my videos, I've got a lot of uh, videos on this Hilux, service guide, 
um, how to change struts, CV joints, all that type of thing. So click onto the channel.